Well, he's one of our favourite sons, is he not? Um, the number one golfer from this country right at the moment and overachieving on the world stage. Ryan Fox joins us. Happy New Year, mate. Yeah, you too, Marty. When I say overachieving, I know probably in your own mind you're not, but as so many of us are so proud of what you did last year. That's just the beginning, though, isn't it? I hope so. I mean, I've got lots of cool things to look forward to this year, get to, get to play some PGA Tour events, the Masters, and uh, a bunch of other stuff. So, yeah, hopefully last year was the start of something, and, um, yeah, I can kick forward from there. Yeah, so how, how do you how do you deal with that? Do you shut the door completely on it? I mean, or, or what, do you spend a lot of time reflecting and writing about things that you did that you want to do again? Um, you obviously want to recapture that form, play even better. How do you, you know, how do you, how do you, how do you sort of infuse last year into what you do this year, I suppose I'm asking? Um, I, mean, I guess it's got to be a little bit of both. I mean, obviously it's a new year. Um, you know, I've got a lot, lot of new things coming, so you know I can't probably have the expectations as high as what they were last year. You know, it, it's, you know, go play some of those events in the states. You know, it's going to be like playing a major every single week against the best players in the world, the best golf courses. So you know, it, it'd be be hard to have the same sort of expectations on results. But you know, it's also look back and go, okay, well, what worked well last year, and there's no reason why I can't take that into We'll take the process of that into all the stuff I'm playing this year. So hopefully, you know, I can. I'll still have to learn a lot. Um, you know, try to figure out some new golf courses and all of that kind of stuff. But um, you know, obviously had a pretty good idea of what was going on on the golf course last year, what worked well, and kind of take that into this year and and you know, pretty much hope for this this similar kind of results basically. So, you know, how do you, how do you define that you're playing well, and and how and, and 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 how then do you look at in terms of okay, how can I improve on that, or how much better can I get? Like, do you still think that you can get a lot better and play better? Yeah, I mean, a lot is probably a stretch. Um, you know, it's such small margins at the top, as you know, for most sports, and you know, I'm not too far away from things now and gave myself a lot of chances to win last year so you know, obviously my game's you know pretty good in that respect so it's just you know carrying on improving just you know the little one percent at a time kind of thing that old cliche and um i guess you know going forward for me it's just putting myself in contention a bit more in bigger events like majors or the the rolex series events or the pj tour events i get to play this year and um you know that's that's more mental than anything else that's, you know, trust that my game's good enough that I think being in that situation and getting comfortable in that situation and, and all those things, and I can take a lot out of last year in that regard, but there's still, you know, a fair bit to learn too. How are you swinging it? Like, are you, are you hitting a ball better than you ever have? Is that, is that what you felt like last year? Um, not necessarily hitting it better, but sort of doing everything else better than I ever have I, you know statistically everything was really good last year I think I was in the top 50 and and all the major stats categories which is the first time that's that's happened and you know putter was probably a big one for me um you know I, I was I think I've normally been in about the bottom 50 on tour and putting and last year I was in the top 50 so that made a massive difference and um you know all the other stuff was was really good as well short game was tidy I hit the ball really nicely so um yeah, it's, it's nice to see all parts of the game were trending in the right direction. And, you know, that's obviously what you need in this game. Champion. You know, the best right. players in the world generally have have no no weakness. Champion Ryan Fox is with us. And we're going to talk about the Masters shortly, getting that invitation and getting to play the PGA and everything else. What was your big improvement last year? If you have to pick one thing, was it was it your on-course management? Was it, as you've said, your mental game? Was it your putt? Was it what? Is there, is there one thing that you can think, yes, that was it? Um, I'll probably go, I could probably go two, and it's the two very different things. My putter was one, obviously, on the actual golf side of things, and mentally I was a lot better at just being in the moment. You know, I wasn't worried about what, what else was going on around me, stuff that I couldn't control. It was, you know, the biggest thing for me last year was go out, try to beat a golf course, and if I did that, I'd be there or thereabouts, and that happened, you know, a lot more than it had in previous years, which was nice. I'm going to ask you a couple of dumb questions as always, mate. You can tell me if they're dumb. Does having a family, does having your own family help? 
Uh, yes and no. I mean, obviously, it puts things in perspective really well. Um, you know, when they travelled last year, it definitely made things a lot harder as well. But um, you know, you also had that nice thing when you left. When I left golf, I left golf completely. You know, yeah, I, I yeah. could go and hang out with the family, and you know, my daughter didn't care if I shot sixty or eighty, kind of thing. Um, you know, I was just still dad, and that that certainly helps and puts things in pers- to perspective and gives you. You know, other things to focus on on tour, which um, you know you definitely need sometimes. But obviously, you know, you add you add in the being away a lot. Um, oh yeah, right. Of course, keep forgetting that. Yeah, well, they 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 travelled they travelled a lot with me, which was great. But um, you know, anyone that's travelled with kids and you know long haul flights with toddlers and getting through airports <laughs> and all that stuff um, makes, makes travel makes travel a little a little harder. So yeah, yeah there's there's. The cost, the cost, uh, the benefits definitely outweigh the cost, but um, yeah, there's it's certainly you know, doing it with a family um, is a lot a lot trickier um, in, in a lot of ways than than not, but it's certainly worth it. When you talk about the, you know the mental thing, and I remember you being in the studio with me, and it's a few years ago now, and we talked about it then. I've never forgotten it, but we were talking about you in Melbourne when you, the old man was on the bag, and you kind of reached a point, and I don't know what tournament it was, but you re, you, you know you'll obviously remember. But you reached a point, and you really did question and wonder, God, is this me? If you know, am I going to make this? Maybe I should, maybe I should give that up. Do you ever go back to that time and think about that and think, wow, what has happened since? Yeah, a little bit. It's, it's the same things probably happened to me. Um, a couple of times since, maybe not to the same extent, but um, you know, I, can, I guess I can go back to a few different places. I mean, you know, playing amateur golf and you know, giving up uni and playing full time amateur golf and thinking, well, should I have ever done that? And um, obviously, then you know that that tournament you mentioned, my second year, which was Aussie Masters, and I was ready to give it up and finish fifth and um, had a break, and all of a sudden, you know, golf was fun again and. I, you know, I had a period in 2019 where I missed seven cuts in a row after winning and thought, um, you know, do I really want to keep doing this and putting myself through this? But, yeah, it's all worth it in the end. I mean, you know, I think that's sport in general. It's sort of, you know, every sports person's gone through, you know, something like that, you know, questioning themselves. And um, I guess when you get through it, it, it makes it all worthwhile. What does Grant say to you? Does he? I mean, obviously, just as a dad, he's going to give you advice and things. And he played a team sport, but in his team sport, he was almost an individual at a lot of times in that team sport because of the responsibility of winning a test match for your country by kicking a goal. You know, I kind of think there is a parallel with that and, and actually hitting a clutch putt. I, you know, I hope I hope I am not talking through my backside. No, I think that is the big parallel with rugby. I mean, you know. And goal kicking that ball doesn't move either, right? You know, you've got too much time to think about it. And um, you know, Dad caddied for me a lot when I was growing up, and um, it was like having a sports psych on the bag without sort of the the mumbo jumbo, if you want to put it that way. Like it was, it was very practical, and it was all about you know routines and processes and stuff like that. And I think that got, I wouldn't say drilled into me early, but I, I certainly had a, a bit better idea of that. Um, from someone who who had done it than than most people, and I think I got pretty lucky in that regard. And you know, Dad and I were a little bit different. He's very analytical. Um, you know, I'm kind of not. I don't really mind if I had a bad shot. I had a bad shot. I don't need to know what the cause of it was. Whereas Dad was kind of the opposite. If he if he missed a kick at goal, he wanted to know exactly what he did so he could rectify it next time. Um, and it took probably a little while for us to both figure out we were slightly different in that regard. But I certainly learned a lot from him, and he's been you know, very supportive. Um, you know, the whole way through and um, I guess the cream for them last year was, you know, they were over at Dunhill when I won. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, you know, I think that, that sort of made it, you know, pretty cool for Dad and that would go Mum and Dad, you know, to see, you know, to see it firsthand, you know, to, to win a big event like that and, and, you know, that's kind of the reward for them and to have them there was just amazing. Ryan Fox is with us. Amazing for you as well. And we talked about that after that. Uh, after that, Just to win with that quality field, to have Rory, who was such uh, on fire at the time, coming up your, you know, right up your rear end as well, to be able to hold that off, play such great, consistent golf and everything. Is that something that you're going to look back and draw on when it comes to this PGA Tour? Because this is kind of like a – this is all brand new now, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I mean, it's, you know, I play in Europe now. And, you know, I've played all the golf courses of – you know, I know most of the guys, and yeah, we get some some of the big guys playing, but you know, there's the intimidation level's not quite there. Whereas, going to the PGA Tour, it's going to be new golf courses every week. 
Um, and obviously, you know, I said it earlier, you know, it's like playing a major every week with some of those elevated events they've got now. It's, you know, pretty much every one of the top 50 players in the world playing. Yeah, hell yeah. Um, you know, I've lucky enough to beat in a few of them now, and I can do, certainly draw on that from events like Dunhill and, and stuff like that. But it, it is certainly going to be new, and I think I've got to temper the expectations a little bit in that regard, you know, go out and, you know, it's pretty hard to expect to play well when you're, you know, playing and get, or expect to compete week in, week out when you're, you know, you've got guys that have played all the golf courses, you know, multiple times. It yeah. makes such a difference in that regard, um, you know, preparation-wise, energy level-wise. Um, and, you know, it, while we're good at figuring out how to play a golf course, you know, seeing it, one, one, one and a half times before you you play um, versus someone that's played it, played the tournament ten times. You know you can't sort of beat experience in that regard sometimes. Yeah, look, and, and I always say with um, with golf, especially men's golf, that I think it's the most competitive sport in the world, and that the top hundred players on any given day could actually win a tournament and, and and beat each other. So that's how competitive it is. So when you say you're tempering it, what are your ambitions for the year? What are your dreams for the year? I mean, I guess the big one for me would be to get a PGA Tour card. Um, you know, I've got, I feel like I've got two cracks that this year. We've got our order of merit in Aussie, uh, sorry, not in Europe, um, where they take the top 10 not otherwise exempt. Um, and I certainly would have got that last year, no problem. So, um, you know, that's that's one chance. And obviously I get a bunch of the PGA Tour starts through being in the top 50. So I can play my way on there by playing well. Um, you know, I think... Obviously, both of them are going to be tough to do, but um, you know, it's kind of nice in the fact I've also got a free year in that regard. I've got nothing to lose. It's not like I'm playing for any for my job out on, on tour. I know I've got this next year after winning. So, um, yeah, it's kind of nice. Lots of opportunity and, and not a whole lot to lose, which is a nice place to be. Does making the draw for the majors and especially the masters does that change your plan and prep for the year? Like, do you start a, u- uber focusing on that, or is that just going to be a tournament that you just have to let come to you? Um, I think I mean, I've always just sort of let them come to me in that regard. But it's nice to be able to pick a schedule. I mean, last year I was really busy through the earlier part of the year because I qualified for a couple of the majors late notice and I played a bunch of events and all of a sudden you go, well, I've got to add these two, but, you know, what do I do schedule-wise? I think I ended up playing six weeks in a row and five weeks in a row in the space of, I think, uh, a 13-week period, which I certainly, yeah, I was pretty knackered at the end of that. So this year at least, you know, I know I'm in them a, a, a fair way out so I can kind of plan a schedule around them and I've got a, a pretty nice schedule if it all, all pans out this year where I can play a bunch of events in the States, still be able to get home um, and, and you know get a couple of breaks here and there as well, which is really important for me. All right, finally, the invitation to the Masters. And, you know, I, I read that it had come through the mail and I thought, it can't. Surely they don't send it by post. Surely that they get bloody email or text you or something. How did you actually get it? How do you receive it? Um. So it was a funny one, actually. I I got a an email saying that there was something coming from you know UPS or whatever it was, um, but said it'd been delayed because there's a flight cancelled. So at that point, I know it's coming. It says it's from Augusta National. So at that point, right. I definitely know what it is. Um, and I, we were away from Boxing Day till about the eighth. Um, and obviously, with that weather we had coming, I was I was a bit worried and. I texted my neighbour and said, are you guys home? He said, yep, definitely. He goes, I, we had a package for them that we'd picked up for Christmas. I said, well, do you mind going to our letterbox and picking up a package from me just so it doesn't get wet? <laughs> and he sent, he sent me a photo of the package. Thankfully, it was pretty uh, pretty watertight. Um, and he just left it in, in the garage for us, which was nice. And you came home on the 8th or whatever it was, and that package was there and, and opened it. And, um, yeah, that's certainly going to be framed. I think, you know, the Masters in that regard does everything, you know, very classy, very old school. Um, it was pretty cool to, um, wow. get to, to get the official one. I mean, obviously I knew I was in the field yeah. when they announced the top 50 again. We're going to gonna have an invite and... Um, yeah, to get God, that's cool. To get the actual official one. I mean, that's so cool. God, that's every, cool. That's every brilliant. Professional golfer one. But, yeah, man, what a dream. What a buzz that is, man. Yeah, I mean, I, I thought I'm 36 and uh, five days or whatever it is. 
um, you know, I thought something like that may have passed me by in my career, and I was, I was kind of almost okay with it at that point. And yeah, certainly, uh, certainly nice to, you know, to get the reward of last year was is certainly getting that invite in the Masters, and I got a bunch of mates coming, mum and dad are coming, Brilliant. and you know, whatever happens at the end of my career, um, you know. I can say I've I've played in the Masters and and that's a massive massive tick off the bucket list. All the very best, you know. You've got a massive fan here and 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 also with our audience and everything. You're much loved, mate. Thank you so much for your time. As always, we'll be in touch. And I just really genuinely wish you all the very best this year. Play well, won't you? Thanks, Marty. Appreciate it.